The latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here. As always, if you want to get involved, there are so many ways for you to do so. You can email us. The email address is feedback at doubletap.online. We welcome all sort of correspondence from you guys. Of course, on Twitter, we are there and all social media. It is at Double Tap Canada. And if you use the hashtag Ask Double Tap, we will hopefully get to your questions on this show or another show, but we'll definitely get back to you. Stephen Scott, how are you feeling this week? I hope that the summer is treating you well. It is, yeah. I'm having a great time. Always great to talk about technology, and there's plenty of exciting new stuff to talk about today around my favourite topic of Apple. <laughs> it's everybody's favourite topic, I think, these days. <laughs> a couple months ago, or no, not even a couple months ago, earlier this summer, Apple did something really cool and unprecedented, which was a digital-only version of their Worldwide Developers Conference, otherwise known as WWDC. Um, overall impressions, because I know that we, we talked about this several episodes ago leading up to WWDC, but we didn't really, really, you know, wrap up the conference uh, per se. Overall, my initial feelings were that it was it was actually quite good. It could have been dull and boring, but I think they really did make it dynamic and exciting. Oh, I, I tell you, it was amazing to watch. I, I'll be honest, there was a lot of drone footage that made me feel physically sick whilst I was watching it. All that whizzing about from place to place and around the Apple campus, which was amazing, don't get me wrong. But yeah, I mean, it was a gorgeous event to watch. And, you know, it's funny because I'd been watching a Microsoft event just a few weeks prior and it was terrible, just a mess. Uh, you know, I think we managed to get a whole hour and a half in before the whole thing collapsed and <laughs> we had to just go away and you know, have some lunch while they figured it all out. Whereas this thing was pre-recorded in advance, it was all done, highest possible quality um, and very informative as well. But what I liked was they got a lot of features and they crammed a lot into it in the usual time it would have taken, about an hour and a half for, for a, a conference. So no, it was a very interesting event to watch and uh, yeah it's very well polished as well brilliant work by them yeah I, f I find I find they did a really good job at getting in as many features as they could they probably got in I would say a good 25% more than they would normally yeah. because there were no holds for applause no reaction in the audience and no opportunity to mess it up I mean as you said it was pre-recorded so it was very well packaged and I think it was well received by absolutely everybody the big thing we want to talk about today is iOS 14 obviously iOS 14 lends itself to iPad OS 14 so a lot of the things we're going to be talking about today are not only for the iPhone, but also for the iPad. Uh, there were so many features, Stephen. I remember back when they would do these things on stage, they'd have all these features listed out on a board and they'd get to maybe, I don't know, five or six of them in any given keynote. But this year I found they got to a lot more and my personal favorite, honestly, and I know Android users are gonna be like, ah, we've had that for so long, are the widgets on the home screen and just the whole home screen navigation, how they've really simplified things and allow you to customize it even more. That's that was my takeaway as well. Customization is really the key of iOS 14 in, in a lot of ways. I mean, you're right, widgets is one thing. I mean, you know, they always say, don't they? Yeah, oh yeah, Android have had it for years, but now Apple have done it. They've done it right. Uh, you know, Apple always take a little bit longer to bring these features through, but that's the reason because they want to take the time and get it done properly. So I, I think it's great that they've done that. Uh, but, you know, customization lends itself right throughout the whole operating system now, uh, you know, right into some serious granular levels. And, you know, when I talk about accessibility, there are tons of new accessibility features that you know, are far more customizable. But that's the same across the system as well, which I think is a really great thing. For me, I think it's about Siri. I, I want to see Siri get better. Uh, and it seems to be the case that it's getting certainly visually more appealing. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this new approach where, you know, Siri doesn't take over the screen anymore. I think it might look good to a lot of people. But for those of us with, you know, the inability to distinguish one thing, Thing from the other on a screen, it could be a bit tricky. So it seems like what they've done is they've made it look a lot better. Um, whether that's good for, for us blind folk, I don't know. But I think that the functionality will be the key. If Siri can be improved, then, well, hey, that can only be a good thing. 
Yeah, the only question we really kind of leave WWDC with is when are we going to see this operating system get released? Because typically we see a September event where they announce the new iPhone, the next generation iPhone, and they also announce the coinciding you know, launch of the new operating system. But because of all the events going on in the world now and production delays, we're not 100% sure when we're going to see the drop of the new iPhone. So when we're going to see the drop of this new operating system, iOS 14 is still up in the air, but hopefully you guys at home will be able to jump on board and give us your feedback once you do get your hands on with it. And of course, we welcome that feedback. It's feedback at doubletap.online. And of course, on Twitter, as I mentioned off the top, it is at doubletap Canada with the hashtag ask double tap. So Stephen, we've got a couple favorite features in iOS 14 that we're going to highlight on this week's episode of Double Tap TV. You're going to dive into some cool accessibility stuff. I've got some cool stuff on the translation side of things. So we're going to take a quick break here on Double Tap TV. And when we come back, we'll dive into We'll start with you, Stephen. Like, you know, a gentleman first, and then and then we'll come back and wrap up the show with the uh, with my translation features. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca/slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys again for being here as always. And I'm going to drill this home, guys. Feedback at doubletap.online. We just, we just want to hear from you. Uh, on Twitter, it is at Double Tap Canada with the hashtag AskDoubleTap. We are talking all about iOS 14 and WWDC. And Stephen, you seem to dive in headfirst into accessibility whenever it comes to a new operating system like this, don't you? That's right, Mark. I mean, there are a ton of features in iOS 14 that I am very excited about. But... It's no great surprise to you probably that I'm going to dive straight into accessibility because that's where I always start. Whenever a new operating system comes along from Apple or indeed Android, I guess, I'm always into the accessibility settings because I want to know what's new, what's there, what's different this time around. The main feature that everybody's talking about from uh, iOS 14 that relates to accessibility is one called Backtap. And it's a really interesting feature because what it does is it allows you to take your little iPhone and tap the phone twice at the back or triple tap with one finger and that will action, well, whatever you want it to action. You can customize that gesture. They might think, well, what's the point in that? What am I going to use that for? Well, it could be as simple as answering a call or playing and pausing music. Or, hey, with third-party support, you can even use an app like Seeing AI. And you can link that double tap on the back of the device to recognize short text. Maybe you need to do that a lot, where you want to recognize text or read a, a document that you've just got delivered to you. Or, you know, find out who the, the, the letter in the post is for in your household. Well, very quickly, with a double tap on the back of the device, then you can very quickly uh, get access to that app. It just shortcuts you right into seeing AI, which is wonderful. So that's one thing you can do. You can customize those gestures entirely with Backtap, and it is a very popular feature. Not really brought about for voiceover users, I should point out. It's not for blind people per se. This is a generic disability uh, accessibility feature, I guess you could call it, because it's for anyone. It was actually developed, as Apple tells us, for those who use switch controls. So for those who perhaps need to use switch controls to input into their device, they maybe just want an extra way, an extra layer of being able to interact with their device, Backtap gives you that. So that's the big one everyone's talking about. For blind people, there is one feature that we're talking about, and that is voiceover recognition. Now, under your uh, settings, under accessibility, and under voiceover, you'll find this. You'll find voiceover recognition, a new feature that uses artificial intelligence to identify labels, buttons, graphics, text on graphics as well, all using various aspects and features that are actually built in. And you can find them all uh, just underneath the uh, settings uh, under accessibility, under voiceover, then voiceover recognition, you'll find image descriptions, which you can turn on. That's brilliant. So for example, if I open up my camera roll here, I'm able to now no longer get this. Photo, April 28th, Bishan, textile. But instead, get this. Photo, April 28th, a dog lying on a cushion. Which is a big difference, right? So, you know, instead of giving me this garbage of image dot whatever PNG or you know, whatever nonsense it comes out with, actually gives me a meaningful understanding of what is inside that picture. 
without having to caption and label every single one, which we used to have to do. We used to have to do this, Mark. We used to have to take every single image and we'd have to caption it ourselves. So we'd have to know what was in the image by just literally by because we'd just taken it and then we'd have to very quickly caption it. Now, artificial intelligence allows us to do that. So I now know that image is of my dog resting on his cushion, uh, probably actually his bed, but that's fine. It's a lot closer than image.png. So that is a fantastic feature. Now you can also use artificial intelligence to grab text from pictures as well. I and mean, when you fuse that with the artificial intelligence telling you what's in the image, think about things like memes. Take a meme and be able to extract out the picture information and also extract out the text that's on it. It doesn't give you, I guess, the contextual information perhaps to get the joke of a meme or the point of a meme, but at least it gives you the understanding of what everyone else in the office is laughing about and gives you an, a better idea. So, you know, this is a great way to be more inclusive. It's a really, really functional thing. Now, of course, then there's app accessibility, which is a big issue for a lot of us. We're all used to hearing button, button, button. Well, that does tend to go away with this because voiceover recognition, what it will do is it will look at the button that is perhaps maybe a home button, let's for it say, for example, in an app. Uh, it'll have a little picture of a house on it that you can see, but because there's no label behind it, we as blind people just hear the word button. If that button is labeled, we'll hear home button. That's how it works, right? It's as simple as that. There has to be a label put onto each button. But if it's not there, what do you do? Well, we hear button, 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 and the problem with button, button, button is you don't know what you're pressing. And that's obviously quite annoying. So to solve that problem, what Apple have done is they've built voiceover recognition to be able to use artificial intelligence to look at those individual buttons, assess what they are, and give you instant feedback. So no longer will we hear button, we'll hopefully hear home button. Now, of course, it will all depend on the image that's on the button itself, the information that it, the actual uh, artificial intelligence can glean. So it's not gonna be perfect. And it's not gonna let, hopefully, uh, let app developers off the hook, which is the other key here. We don't want them thinking, well, the apps will do it for us. So, you know, just let it go. Not at all. We want to still have app developers make their apps as accessible as possible. What this might do, conversely, is actually show people what is capable and what could be done, which of course would be wonderful. So, you know, that's that's a real positive. So voiceover recognition, very powerful. You've got to turn all of these features on individually on iOS 14. You've got to turn on image descriptions. Then you've got to turn on the uh, app accessibility as well, which comes under a uh, screen recognition, a very powerful feature, and text recognition, which is separate as well. And you can also give uh, a bit of feedback, or you can get some feedback from your phone as well by uh, speech or by sound, so that you know that voiceover recognition is working and is giving you that feedback. So very, very powerful features just in there. Um, one other one I want to pick up on is the uh, hearing improvements uh, for those who have got uh, hearing problems. Now, under uh, sound recognition, this is under general accessibility settings, uh, you'll find this, which is wonderful. This sound recognition feature I think is great for a lot of people. Now for those who are partially uh, deaf or profoundly deaf, uh, the challenge is knowing what's going on around about you. Now let's say someone breaks a window in the middle of a night uh, and you're deaf, you wouldn't hear that would you? Well your phone can hear that and it can give you alerts in text form and of course for those of us who are blind in uh, speech form as well. So you know if you've got you know, partial hearing loss and you have a sight problem, then, you know, this could be really beneficial. If you have a baby and the baby starts crying at night, you want to be able to hear that. If a fire alarm goes off, you want to hear that. Now, if you're deaf, you can't. So the app can hear it for you and will display that information to you in whatever form, vibration to wake you up. And then of course, a text alert on your phone so you know what's going on. The very, very powerful features that exist in iOS 14. These features can be used by anybody. And you know, if you are sighted watching this, and Mark, you know, for you especially, if you're sitting there thinking, well, these, these features are really good. I, I could use some of these. You know, I've got a house, maybe I'm in a deep, deep sleep quite a lot of the time. I don't you know, hear a lot of noise in the house. You know, that, that feature of hearing a window smash would be really good. Or running water if you know, perhaps a flood is about to emerge. You, know, you want to know that that is going on. And uh, the phone can help you with it. Some really powerful features 
an iOS 14 for sure around accessibility. There's so much more to come on iOS 14 and I'm going to dive into some of the cool, I guess it's a cool feature across the board when it comes to traveling and just interacting with people in different languages. It's more iOS 14 when we come back right here on Double Tap TV. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI-audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. He is Stephen Scott. I am Mark Aflalo. Thank you guys so much for being here. I love the accessibility features. I love the back tap because it's something that can work, Stephen, across the board, whether you are uh, you need the accessibility features or not, which is why I always tell people, dive into these features because they really are cool and quite pivotal and could change the experience for the iPhone just like you did, right? Yeah, I, th I think even Apple were quite surprised at the uh, level of interest that back tap garnered, considering it's actually buried away under touch settings uh, under accessibility uh, if you're looking for it. But it's, it's a great little feature and it will have a big impact, I think, for a lot of people. So one of the things I wanted to demonstrate here um, was a way to hands-free send a voice recording to a friend. So Stephen, I need you to play the part of my friend here because I don't have many other friends. Okay. And on my wife's I'll, I'll do that. Just for you, Mark, I'll do that. <laughs> I appreciate that. We'll pretend, uh, <laughs> we'll pretend, pretend this is friends. reality, right? Um, <laughs> So one of the cool things you'll notice when you invoke Siri, as we talked about off the top of the show, is that the minimized experience. Now, it, it, I have to apologize in advance for the sound of the vibration on this phone. The reason this is my wife's old phone is because there's problems with it. And one of the problems is that this is what it sounds like when I press the home button. Isn't that great? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press and hold the home button, and it's going to invoke Siri. I'm going to say, hey, Siri, send a voice message to Stephen Scott. starts recording and I could say, hi Steven, how are you doing today? This is a test of the emergency broadcasting system. And then it gives me the option to send it and I go ahead, go ahead and send the message. So that's how simple it is to send a voice memo or a voice message to anybody. Now, the interesting thing about voice messages, and I don't think people realize this, is that they expire after a certain period of time when the person has listened to it. You can turn that off in settings. So if you just go to your settings and go to your voice recordings, you can actually set that time limit to go away, which is pretty cool. And it's a great way to hands-free send a message to anyone, especially when you don't want to you know, worry about dictation messing up. Yeah, I don't know about you, but when I dictate to my iPhone, I find that maybe 50% of the time it gets the, the actual words right. It might you know say four instead of the number four. So many mistakes happen across the board. Hopefully that is something that improves in iOS 14. I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, well, funnily enough, I use voice uh, rather than text dictation a lot of the time. I mean, WhatsApp is the place I tend to use that most. I record little messages yeah. uh, between the groups. So we, we tend to use voice because it's easier. Like you say, you don't have all the hassle that goes along with it. Uh, that's a really cool feature though. I didn't know you could do that. So that, I'm really excited about that. I'm trying that out after the show. Yeah, that's no, great, especially when the phone's kind of sitting away on the, on the charger on the side, which is really cool. Now, if you're traveling, okay, and if you've been to another country or somewhere, and I know no one's traveling these days, but if you go, for example, I live in Quebec. In Quebec, we speak French, we speak English. Some people, you know, don't necessarily speak French, but may encounter someone who is speaking French that doesn't speak English very well. Well, there's now a Translate app built into iOS 14. When you launch Translate, you first are presented with this screen where you could choose your source language, choose your destination language. So here I have English and French, and I could start typing in a phrase like, hello, my name is Mark. And then when you hit go, it will translate that sentence into French so you can see it. But the cooler part of this app is when you go landscape, so when you actually flip your phone to the side, you're presented with English on one side and French or the other language that you chose on the other side. And when you hit that microphone on the bottom, just like this, and you start talking. Hi, Stephen, my name is Mark. Do you happen to know where the bathroom is? You pause a second, and then it automatically translates it and plays it back in the other language. And it's smart enough to actually detect the language that is being spoken. So if you hold this up and you're both looking at this phone at the same time, you can actually carry on a conversation, albeit with a little bit of a delay between talking back and forth, but it is near real time as you could possibly get on a device that is processing this in real time on the device. Super handy, especially when you don't speak the other language. An incredible tool for people who are traveling. Something that 
until today was only doable with third party apps, still needed to go to the cloud to get translations so you're using lots of data. This is actually doing it on the device. When you set up the alternate languages, it downloads the basic language pack and it still goes to the cloud occasionally. But these two together are some of the coolest features that I found in iOS 14 so far. I'm sure there's gonna be so many more, but I'm sure you can see yourself, especially in Europe, Stephen, using an app like this on a frequent basis, couldn't you? Yeah, I mean, I think as well, it means that you'll think about where you go more. I mean, I would love to visit certain countries, but I don't speak every language. Language. And you know, being able to go to any country and use an app to do that, I think it respects the language as well. It helps, you know, forge these languages because I think a lot of the time people tend to think English is the default, and that shouldn't be the case. You know, lots of great places in the world have fantastic languages, very different languages. Now, I don't know how many languages this will support, but you know, I'd imagine being Apple, they will be fairly universal. You know, Google have done this for a long time. Some would argue they've got here first with this technology. How good it is in the field, we'll know. I mean, you, you know, what, what was the delay there on, on you doing that? Seconds of even that? Oh, we're talking about seconds, talking about seconds. I mean, that's brilliant. It's definitely tolerable if you're having a conversation with somebody. Yeah. That's great. Well, when we come to, when we get together again and I get back to Canada, I can, I can come to your town and we, I can talk French to people. How cool is oh, that? I can't wait till 2024. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys enjoyed any of these features, do let us know. Again, the email address is feedback at doubletap.online. On Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada with the hashtag AskDoubleTap. Stephen, thank you, obviously, for your guidance there on the accessibility side. Hopefully, we get some great feedback from users. There are people out there. I mean, there is a public beta of iOS 14 available. So if you do have the kahunas and you actually want to get involved in this beta test, I encourage you to do so. But always use it on a secondary phone. Do not install this on your primary. I've done that so many times, Stephen. No, don't do it. Don't put it on your primary phone. You can go back, but yeah, it's not easy to Yeah, it's just a really bad idea. Really bad idea. Oh, God. Especially yes, if you rely true, on accessibility. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here on this edition of Double Tap TV. On behalf of Stephen Scott, I am Mark Aflalo. We will speak to you again next week on Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. Hosted by Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Will Attar. Production assistance, Wendy Kaufman. Integrated Describe Video Specialist Ron Rickford. Coordinating Producer Jennifer Johnson. Director Production Karen Nye. Director Programming Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming John Melville. President and CEO David Arrington. Copyright 2020 Accessible Media Inc.